Okay, as part of the new study guide, you only need to really be aware of changes in the RBA stance in the last two years um, and reasons for that. But I'm just going to give you a really quick, brief overview of some of the times they've changed the cash rate just to improve your understanding of why they changed the cash rate. So, for example, back in 2007, we had really strong growth. We had things like high underlying inflation, a really fast terms of trade or a good strong terms of trade. Unemployment was really low. Um, we had tight labour markets, strong consumer confidence levels, and we were really close to our productive capacity. So basically what all this was emerging was it was causing inflationary pressures, and that's why we had such a high cash rate back in 2007. The other problem was that Kevin Rudd was trying to be popular, so he was implementing expansionary mon um, budgetary policy initiatives, like lower tax cuts, uh, and, sorry, tax cuts and things like that, which forced the RBA to be more contractionary. So these are sort of just some examples of times where the RBA is likely to be more expansionary in their stance. In 2010, again, um, so from 2008, 2009, they lowered the cash rate after the GFC. Then in 2010, again, we started to experience um, capacity constraints in the economy and they moved to, again, a more neutral stance. Um, so we recovered from the slowdown of the GFC and things like stronger growth in China, a build-up of consumer confidence, low unemployment, strong capacity constraints, a strong property market, all reasons why the RBA is more likely to implement a tightening of monetary policy. All of these are likely to lead to inflation. Any question you get, multiple choice, they come up all the time. Think about whether every policy is go sorry, every factor or policy is going to be expansionary or contractionary. Uh, oh, sorry, is likely to cause inflation or less inflation. If they're likely to cause high inflation, then the RBA is likely to be more contractionary or tight in monetary policy. So that's the first question you always have to ask yourself when you're doing questions. From 2013 to 2015, we continue to loosen monetary policy. So it got loosened just by 0.25 or 25 basis points. That was because we started to have these signs emerging that the economy was growing in a weaker fashion. So like growth in China was easing, slow retail spending, weaker consumer confidence, commodity prices started to fall. These are all examples of why the RBA would be more expansionary or loose in monetary policy. The government had to be tight, was tightening or incre increasing taxes, so that caused us to be less. So all of these were acting as signs that the RBA should become more expansionary because they were all leading to less inflationary pressures. The only thing that was causing some reluctance on the RBA's behalf to, to decrease the cash rate was that house prices kept increasing. So they wanted to, they were a bit concerned about household debt levels, which would prevented them from loosening monetary policy too much, but everything else was pointing towards a further loosening. In 2016, the RBA loosened monetary policy twice as well. So in 2015, they reduced it from 2.25% to 2%. Um, and then in 2016, they reduced the cash rate from 2% to 1.5%. So in May, they reduced the cash rate to 1.75%. And then again in August, they reduced it back to 1.5%. Um, they were basically recognizing that they had to achieve a, a further stimulus to the economy to have the impact they wanted on economic growth. Because of deleveraging, because of the banks not passing on the cash rate cuts, they had to continue to be more expansionary going forward. So in 2016, there were a lot of statistics supporting lower interest rates. So we had things like commodity prices were fairly weak, mining investment was weak, we had lots of spare capacity in the labour market, so we had a lot of unemployment and underemployment, which was leading really to really slow wage growth. That was a really important factor that caused the loosening of monetary policy. Global economic growth was weak, um, the unemployment rate was at 5.7%, so above the target range and headline inflation was only at 1%. The RBA were quite concerned that deflation was going to occur, so they didn't want that to occur because that would reduce spending because people would wait to spend in the economy as well. The government wasn't actually helping really to help stimulate the economy through budgetary policy because of fiscal consolidation um, as, and the high levels of underutilisation. So they were the main things that caused the RBA to loosen monetary policy throughout 2016. Despite the fact there were some good things going on, like strong export volumes, um, strong property prices, and things like that, but overall it was better to implement a loosening of monetary policy. So, with basically, this is a statement from the RBA's board. They basically made the following comments. So, for some time, the RBA has noted the inflation outlook provided scope for a further easing. 
easing. So basically they summarise first that inflation, not a problem, therefore we can implement a further easing or loosening of monetary policy. After taking into account developments over recent months, months in May they've decided the outlook for economic activity and unemployment rate was little unchanged, but the inflation rate is actually lower than anticipated. So inflation is really low. At the same time, we took careful account of developments in the housing market. So they are worried about the housing market. However, having said that, supervisory measures to strengthen lending standards, so the APRA making it harder for people to get access to loans, has eased pressure in the housing market and therefore helped to reduce, or not reduce property prices, but reduce the growth in property prices. So that's allowing them to be more expansionary as well because increases in housing prices became less of a concern. Taking all of these into consideration, the board judged that the prospects for sustainable growth in the economy with inflation returning to target over time would be improved by further easing of monetary policy. So basically, if we want to achieve domestic economic stability, 2 to 3% inflation, 3 to 4% growth, our best chance of doing that in 2016 was to implement a more expansionary stance. In 2017, growth has been a, has been a little bit weaker, um, but there's been a range of other things that have impacted um, that basically meant there's more of a chance that they're going to keep, well, they have kept interest rates the same. So, for example, things supporting lower interest rates include the fact that the, uh, the government's still trying to be contractionary through fiscal consolidation, and there's still tighter lending standards by the banks, um, as well as the fact that underutilisation is still relatively higher. The Australian dollar is starting to appreciate, so that's one factor that's keeping inflation under control because uh, it's leading to less cost push and less demand pull inflation. So that's one thing that might um, be a sign that the RBA might lower interest rates in the future. Mining investment is still weak. Inflation is still relatively contained. Um, there's strong competition in the retail sector, so that's helping to keep pr what prices down in the retail sector. And there has been a fall in consumer confidence in 2017, which is reducing spending. So these are some reasons why the RBA might implement a further loosening of monetary policy. But there's also factors that show the economy is picking up a little bit. That includes commodity prices increasing. Um, the headline and underlying inflation are now back within the range. So we're less worried about deflation. So that's a big thing that meant that the RBA doesn't need to be quite as expansionary. Strong property prices are making them a little bit reluctant to reduce the cash rate further. Um, loose monetary policy in Europe and the USA has helped to boost demand for our export. So export volumes are really strong. Um, that's partly because of increased demand for steel and things like that in China. Unemployment and underemployment rates are starting to edge a little bit lower. So the labour market has improved a little bit, has become a little bit stronger. Um, and savings ratios have gone down in Australia as well. So these things on the right hand side, the pickup in commodity prices, inflation being back within the target range, stronger export volumes and under, unemployment and underemployment starting to edge a little bit lower are all signs of potentially a stronger economy and that's why the RBA hasn't further loosened monetary policy this year. The RBA are also focused on financial stability so they've got to be mindful when they make their interest rate cuts that it's not going to have too much of an impact on property prices or too much of an impact on increasing our already massive amounts of indebtedness around the world. So the government needs to be mindful when they lower interest rates that they're not stimulating growth and employment that lead to an over-leverage, which basically means that the private sector is in too much debt, which could have je which could jeopardise our future financial st stability and our ability to achieve sustainable rates of growth in the long term. So just to summarise what we've talked about in this video, says with reference to current events, explain the reasoning behind the movement in the cash rate in the last two years. So the, and you need to talk about what the RBA did last year. So the RBA loosened the cash rate twice in 2016, from 2% 2 to 1.5%. Since then, the RBA has maintained the expansionary stance with a 1.5% cash rate. Explain some reasons for the loosening last year. So things like low rates of inflation, potentially signs of deflation, weak wage growth, high levels of spare capacity and underutilisation in the labour market, the slowdown in mining investment, said to the RBA that they need to be more expansionary, as well as the um, commitment to fiscal consolidation, putting all the pressure on monetary policy to be expansionary. This year, they've, reduced, re they've resisted a further loosening of the cash rate. Some reasons for that may be that despite weak growth, there are signs the economy is starting to pick up. So commodity prices have improved, there's been a reduction in spare capacity in the labour market, 
got stronger export volumes, headline and underlying inflation are back within our range. So the RBA is mindful that they still want to target growth and unemployment, but there's less of a need to be expansionary this year than last year because of improvements and the pickup in inflation this year. Thank you.